Hi guys, it's Brian and we're doing the final for the Big Rig Group build hosted by Mr. Jeff over at Jeff's Model Car Garage. Um, after hosting just one group build ourselves, we, we kind of get the idea of, of what one is facing when they're dealing with hosting a group build, especially when you're doing it by yourself. So um, yeah, Jeff, we just want to say thank you very much for hosting this yet again. Uh, you can count on us every year for this because we have now a lot of stuff in stock. <laughs> we were down to this one and that uh, that uh, Diamond Rio that mysteriously disappeared on us. But uh, we were down to just those two and that was all we had left. And now, uh, thanks to Big Eddie and um, a couple other folks out there, we have uh, some, some, some backlog. <laughs> in the stash so thanks to everybody for that uh mrs bg is so excited because she knows how much i swear when i'm building one of these kits uh let's get into what we're supposed to be talking talking about which is this guy right here um a few years ago when we started doing all this stuff we started with um a Ravel kit it was a, a skill level two kit and i thought you know this isn't challenging enough so then i moved on to the white freightliner cab over kit from amt and i thought this is too challenging <laughs> so then we tried to balance out everything by going to the um amt peterbilt 359 that had the optional uh sleeper cab uh that one that one was a lot better but it did have its challenges because it had warp frame and all that kind of you know, the things that, that they're susceptible that these kits are susceptible for so susceptible to i should say but then this guy uh, this guy gets into our hands because we ordered it through the hobby shop and everything and it finally got delivered and we were very, very excited to have it. And um, I I just loved building it. I really enjoyed building it. I was actually so stoked when I started looking into the kit and discovered that when we build, oh, I have tweezers and those will come in handy in a second. But uh, I discovered that when we build up the bed here, we literally build up the bed. I mean, it starts off with just a, a, a the floor and then we add on everything all all of this there's a side piece and all this stuff here this is all molded into into one piece glue that in place clamp it together let it sit overnight set, set up real good we glue on uh, the bill here and then uh then there's the door the door itself is a couple of pieces i think if i remember correctly yeah it's a couple pieces we put on the hinges uh, then we put on the ladder rungs and everything, and then uh, then there's the accoutrement that come along with it, like the the mud flaps and the steps and the handles and all the other all the other jazz that goes along with it. I I just freaking love assembling things sometimes, just the process of assembling, and then while we're assembling things, we're getting ideas about how we want things to look and and kind of go about doing you know little little tweaks here and there that kind of thing. So, I was very excited about this kit from start to finish, and I still am. I'm still am very very excited about this. Uh, I do want to take just a second here to mention that um, our, our our good friend Mr. Kerry Adams had built this kit for um, uh, the group build that I that, that me and Mooger had hosted back during Christmas. Uh, it was a clone of toy group build, and he had built uh, this kit uh, to represent the dump truck that he had gotten when he was a, a young boy for Christmas. And um, since then, he had lost his lovely wife Sharon, and um, we were very sad to hear that. So we have dedicated this build to his wife Sharon um, because she sounded like just an amazing lady. All right, so uh, getting on to things here, um, we did do a very cool thing with this that we had never done on another kit before, and that is open the hood um, in a in sort of like a butterfly fashion. And let's get around to this side here. Da, 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 da. We're just going nice and slow. Kind of giving it. Oh, by the way, this <laughs> this uh, th today we uh, we were out in the garage. It was a hundred degrees in the garage. It was mighty hot, but uh, we decided to do um, a dusting of uh, was that XF fifty seven uh, Tamiya buff all over this guy here to give him a dusty look, like he just got off the trail. And um, I, I went and I cleaned off the windows where you know, like maybe the guy had gotten out his ray. I had masked on. I put some masking on there. Uh, a couple of uh, they look, look like 
uh, pineapple slices. But uh, we had uh, put on a couple of uh, pieces of masking there. And then when I pulled the masking off, I'm like, that's too clean. So I just got um, a Q-tip with some alcohol in there, wiped it down, and brought that window to an absolute <laughs> polished shine. <laughs> so I'm like, don't. <laughs> uh, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, back to the back to what we're supposed to be doing. I digress. So I have to use the tweezers here because I put the handle down where the instructions kind of told us to put the handle. So I put the handle down and it's below the hip of the fender. And it's a little hard for my meat hooks to get in there. So we're going to lift that up and see if that'll stay in place. Yeah, she'll do okay. So there we go. Uh, the little hinge technique there that I had come across by watching a guy on YouTube. And um, I am sorry, I cannot remember what his name is. But if anybody has any questions, I can post a link to the channel down below. Um, but yeah, that worked out really, really well. Uh, I, I, I did. I, I, I have to admit that I was. I impressed myself. Completely, completely compressed, impressed myself with this uh, technique, and I was so stoked about it. I was showing everybody who came over to the house for visiting or whatever. The mailman got tired of me talking to him about it. But uh, I, I had broken it a couple times, so I had to re-glue it back into place. And we got a little bit of we got a little sloppy with our glue, so I'm not too proud of that. But I am proud of the job that we did with that hinge for the hood. So that was a lot of fun to do. That we do have some piano wire running back in here from the firewall up to the the radiator core support, uh, just to keep everything kind of stabilized. Um, and then. Uh, and, you know, when you cut it, cut it a little bit long. If you're doing this technique, you jolly holes, figure out your angles. There's plenty of room back behind the firewall and up inside the radiator for excess wire to go in there. So you don't have to worry about cutting it too short or anything like that. Um, let's see. We did do, like I said before, a nice dusting of buff. We kind of started at the bottom and worked our way up. We did do the underside as best we could. This is a very delicate kit, especially with what we got going on with it. Um, but uh, dusted it up as best we could. And then uh, we also made mud flaps out of a, a bit of glove that was left over from the um, media blasting cabinet that we had. Um, we're using it as a drying cabinet now. But uh, yeah, that was just the right thickness of material. We slathered it with um, some um, CA glue on the back side to help stiffen it up because it wanted to curl and roll up a little bit. So we, we slatted it with some uh, CA glue on the back side so that it would, it would stay the shape we wanted it to. And then we just, uh, you know, put some, we re-slathered it again with more of the mud mixture that I had made up. Uh, and that consisted of oil paints mixed with some um, paint thinner and a little bit of cornstarch to uh, give it some body. And then we tossed in a, a little bit of... Um, cornmeal to give it pebbles and whatever type of thing it always seems to come out to be just the right right type of mixture and stuff now i'm not going to go out in the backyard and dig a hole and pull up some uh pull up some earth and, and and you know that kind of a thing i'm like i'm a scale modeler i i made this look like steel i made that look like rust i made this look like rubber so i'm gonna make the mud out of something that's not mud <laughs> so that's my philosophy uh, let's see here. Also, I don't like the color of the dirt we have in the backyard. Uh, so um, I, I, I do have to say that I really like the detail that AMT has on this kit here. I, I think this must have been one of their Ertl kits. I'm not 100% sure. But the detail on there with the, with the raised bolt heads and everything, they uh, they look great. They lend themselves very well to, uh, to getting dusty and dirty and everything. Um, I did add some high visibility tape down the side here. Uh, because, well, I had some, so I figured that would be good to put on there around the back side. They had this really cool technique on the instructions where they talk about painting this black to make it look like a, a mud flap and then using a sanding stick. Well, they didn't say sanding stick. They said like a file or something, but something extremely flat and just going over the whole thing, the entire surface and removing all the paint and primer. So you get the, the white of the plastic showing through on all the raised parts I like that. I thought that was pretty slick. I'm like, I wish I could do that to all of our truck kits. But uh, yeah, I like how it looks. Um, I like the dust effect on there. It looks pretty good. And then I'm I'm not 100% sure if these taillights are supposed to be that high up there. But it would make sense for visibility, I suppose. We did have a little bit of an issue with the rear uh, 
gate or door, whatever you want to call it here. Uh, perhaps when I was putting my hinges in place, because it's a hockey stick shape right here, I had those rotated a little bit of uh, a little bit out of uh, out of square or whatever. And the the pin down here that's supposed to slide into a little notch doesn't 100% line up. Uh, I have thought about perhaps clipping off those pins and then putting a little piece of styrene in there and then gluing the pins back in place. Um, it might be something that we do as a fix down the road. Excuse me, my goodness. Never do this after Taco Bell. Okay, so um, this does hinge, does pivot. It's a little persnickety. That's, that's the whole name of the game here when it comes to these kits. It's persnickety. Um, the cylinder that's supposed to, to, to telescope in there, it's... Um, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. I'm sure that you could probably re-engineer doing all that kind of stuff, but the, the fit in there is just so sloppy that they're, I mean, it'll stand up by itself just fine. Uh, as long as you don't bump it or knock it or breathe too hard on it, it should be okay. But uh, posing it like that, that's fine. I don't mind doing that. But yeah, that, that cylinder system in there, it's not very, it doesn't lend itself well to being used often, I guess is the best way to say that. Uh, the smokestack, we did add uh, a piece of aluminum tubing up there at the top because I thought that looked better than than what was supplied in the kit, which was a chrome, looked like a chrome spaghetti-o type of thing. So um, a macaroni and cheese type of thing, chrome macaroni and cheese noodle. I didn't like that, so we added that in there. And I'm always disappointed by the heat shields that they supply, but I still use them. So <laughs> can I complain? Probably not. Uh, around this side here, we do have the, the hood set up, so that should hinge on both sides, and she does. So, I, I gotta admit, I was not 100% sure that was going to work. <laughs> but uh, when we did our dusting pass with uh, our airbrush, we did have the hood off and out of, out of the way, so that we could get dust into the engine compartment and everything, because, you know, it's going to. And uh, I, I really like how that looks. Um... The thing that did bother me a little bit was that there is no positive positioning for the headlights. We had to do math. Uh, I hate math. So um, they don't look bad, but I mean, they're probably not perfect. And you do have to drill holes for the turn signals for up here on the fenders, just as a heads up. Uh, but other than a couple of little things that were a little bit annoying, um, this was a very fun kit to do. I enjoyed the heck out of it. Uh, I'm so glad that Jeff decided to, to go ahead and host another one of these videos, another one of these videos, another one of these uh, builds. And um, you can count on us again, sir, for next year. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and sign off now because this has been a very long video and I'm super tired. So uh, we're going to put this on the shelf of honor, take a break, and we'll talk to you all a little bit later on. Bye now.